This is Tony, and before we start, we're going to take a look at this short article that will give us some type of idea of the age of these artifacts that are found in Antarctica. So in this this article here, it said 55 million years ago, Antarctica was full of lush forest. Then about 38 million years ago, as Earth entered into a long period of global cooling, it took 26 million years for the glaciers to cover the continent. And then the last vegetation that existed in Antarctica was on Antarctica's North Pen Peninsula until 12 million years ago. Now with this data, we know that the artifacts in Antarctica are in excess of 55 million years old. The image that we're going to be taking a look at in a minute was taken in this area, which is called the McMurdo Dry Valleys area. And what's really unique about this area, the way it's situated, you, the humidity is extremely low, and plus it hasn't had any rain or snow in over two million years. And that's really good because usually these artifacts that are ex exposed to the environment deteriorate to a point where they're really not recognizable, just like the Trans-Antarctic Mountains. These aren't mountains. These actually are megalithic stone structures. And I have proved that with images and some scientific data that shows that. So these images in this McMurdo Dry Valley area, even though they're exposed to the environment, there's still enough of it where you can make out what they are. So let's go to the image. I wasn't able to locate a coordinates for this image. Neither was I able to find a catalog that this image came from. But the image did come from an article about McMurdo Dry Valley area. And what's interesting about this area is supposed to have the entranceway into Agartha. And if you don't know what Agartha is, it's supposed to be an inner world with a civilization with rivers and lakes and animals that live inside of our planet. But I believe how that mythology got started was there's a system of tunnels that are A-shaped like this. A lot of them have deteriorated and they're hollow inside and they run all over the surface of Antarctica. And probably what happened is some of the ancients had went into some of these systems and found these underground cities and facilities that the Anunnaki had made. The artifacts that are visible is in this area, and I'm gonna show them to you a lot clearer in just a minute. Here's one of these giant archways that's fallen over, and we've all seen, also seen these giant archways that are as tall as 15,000 feet in the Gambersif mountain range, which actually isn't a mountain range, it's actually a city that's buried in ice. And then there's a, a vessel right here. So let's go to a black and white, and then we can start taking a look at these images. Okay, I'm gonna stop at this black and white. And before we look at these artifacts, I'm gonna show you an entranceway. It's right in, in this area. And I'm gonna do one more close up. Entryway, the entranceway is right in here. And then if you look, you can see that these walls in this structure kind of have deteriorated and shifted and have collapsed, you can see underneath here. So whatever this is underneath this facility here 
was a way to service this facility, and you'll understand more in just a minute as we go a little bit further in this video. In our first close-up of the facility, we're gonna take a look right here, and this is an archway. It stood up at one time, and then over the means of years of erosion and deterioration, this side finally gave away and it fell back and into this direction. Because these things weighed in the millions of pounds, they were uh, extremely tall and extremely large. And then this zigzag over here is what is left of this archway that once stood up. Now, if you notice the indentation here, and it's kind of jagged on these edges, this actually was completely encased. And it looks like the match that I did, that this actually set into this archway when it was standing and went all the way down to the, the surface for whatever reason. And then when it fell and gave away this part of this archway, gave away and fell out and fell this direction. Now here's uh, the what I call a vessel. And the reason I call it that is because the vessel is round and then it has a round cap on it. And most vessels are made this way especially ones that are pressurized because when you pressurize these vessels it distributes the pressure evenly over the structure and it makes the stru structure a lot stronger and a lot harder for there to be a, a compromise in the structure or to cause a rupture. So I didn't know exactly what this round structure was but I knew it was some type of vessel or some something that maybe housed um, part of this facility for some reason. So when I looked at the oil products, and yes, the cuneiform text, the Sumerian cuneiform text, does say that the Anunnaki used oil products for different medicines and uh, makeup, and for they dated it for different uses. So. But that one didn't match because as you notice, these distillers here, the reason that they're not as wide and they're extremely tall is because when the crude oil is added to these super boilers, it comes out and it separates because it's so hot. So you have like asphalt, lubricating oil, um, you have gasoline and gas. And then there's different popping goes different parts of this distiller and pulls off these products. So this vessel is, is way too uh, wide and short to be anything that would produce something like that. So as I begin to try to locate this, this structure here or something that we would make, I really couldn't find anything, and then one day it dawned on me what that probably could be. And it's a cover for a nuclear reactor. Uh, that's not too far-fetched since we know that they used uh, nuclear weapons, and that civilization covered all over Antarctica, so they had to have some type of power source so that's a very strong possibility is, is what that is. Now I'm gonna take this image, I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments, and then I'm gonna light this facility up so we can get an even better detailed look at it. And now you can see the structure, you can see the archway, you can see the indentation in it. You can see the structure that I believe that was attached to this archway when it stood up at one time. And this containment vessel for the reactor, there's other components coming off of it. And the reason it broke away here and fell on its side is these containment structures are completely enclosed in and then the reactor's in it. So that means the base was solid and was gonna stay in place. And then over time, the deterioration, the main part of the vessel 
which is quite large, fell in this direction. And then on this part here, you see these dots? This is a support for this upper deck, and it was probably inlaid with stone. And then, of course, over time, deteriorated and has fallen in. But if you look over here, here looks like a probably a stone plate or something that was part of this upper deck. It looks like there's a structure here, and when this deck began to uh, deteriorate and fall in, it fell in that direction. This also fell in this direction. So yes, as large as that civilization that covered Antarctica, which were the Anunnaki, they did have to have some type of infrastructure, you know, water and sewage and, and some type of power source and many other things. Uh, I really do believe that this was a reactor that was one part of their power source. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. This is Tony with Earth Files Earth History signing out.